This video is going to cover a review of solving systems of equations. And the three skills that we are going to practice are going to be graphing, substitution, and elimination. A major component to this video is that you understand slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Keep in mind, m is your slope in rise over run form, and b is your y-intercept. If you do not fully understand that concept, you might want to go review it before continuing with the video. Also, keep, please keep in mind, when the questions appear, for the sake of practice, pausing the video and trying to work out the problems would be a very good way to practice this material. Even if you watch the video one time through without pausing, maybe coming back to it a day or two later and just pausing before I solve the questions. That might help you overall learn the material a little bit faster than otherwise. But in any case, let's just go ahead and get started. So uh, let's first practice some graphing. You'll notice in number one, our first equation says y equals negative two-thirds x plus three. What you need to remember is that the negative two-thirds is m, your slope, in rise over run form, and three is b, your y-intercept, where the line crosses the y-axis. The first thing you're going to want to graph is b, your y-intercept. That would be the black dot that you just see on the y-axis at three. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is get your second point by using the slope. Now the slope is again negative two-thirds and you will notice that the negative sign is in front of the fraction bar. Now that means you have to decide is the two going to be negative or the three. The fraction is negative. That's what the negative sign in front of the fraction bar means right there. But what you have to decide when finding your next point on the graph is that your rise or your run has to be negative. So in the first case, when you have negative two, that means you're going to have a negative two going down as your rise. And then because you have a positive three, that's going to be going to the right three. And that's where you can put your next dot. Now you would get the exact same answer if you took your other way of writing it where you have a positive two, so you would go up two and there's the dot for two, and then you would go three to the left, and that would be right there. But in any case, you will get the same answer regardless of which slope you use. So now that you have two dots, you can connect them, and there's your line. Now, your second equation just says y equals 2x. There's no plus b component. There's no y-intercept like there was in the first equation. But the thing is, what you have to keep in mind is that the number 0 does not have to be written down when it's being added. Adding 0 to something doesn't change whatever its value is. So you never really have to write down plus 0. But you still need to know that it's there in terms of graphing. So because zero is our y-intercept, we're gonna put a dot at the origin, or zero, on the y-axis. And to now get our second point, we're gonna use our slope, which is two. And because it's not in rise over run form, we're going to change that into two over one, so that we now know the two is our rise, so we're gonna go up two, and one is our run. We're gonna go one space to the right. And now that we have our second dot, we're gonna go ahead and connect them, and there is our new line. Now, this system is now graphed, but when it comes down to identifying the solution, that's where the lines cross, represented by the blue dot right there. Now, in this particular example, the, uh, the two lines cross at a decimal location, as you can see right here by the answer. Um, in general, on the exams that you're going to see in class, I will keep the numbers as whole numbers and not decimals just to make the math a little easier to do. But just for the sake of the concept, it's where the two lines cross that you have your solution. But all right, let's go ahead and look at number two, which is uh, dealing with a different form. You will notice in number two that our first equation is in standard form, ax plus by equals c form. Now one method for graphing an equation that is in this form is to create a table of values. A table of values where you're going to plug in some value for x or y that you choose and then you're going to calculate the other letter and that's going to allow you to plot your coordinates. So the first letter that we're going to find is x and let's go ahead and plug in the easiest number to use in this case which would be 0. So basically, we are going to choose 0 as our x value, and we're going to plug that into the first equation. So uh, 3 times 0 is what is going to be evaluated, and 3 times 0 is, of course, 0. It's going to go away. It cancels out. 
So all we have now is the 2y equals negative 6, which you can see right there. I just rewrote it. And what we now have to do is calculate our value for y that we get after plugging in 0. And that's how you basically create a table of values. You choose whatever coordinate you choose a value for. We could also pick 0 for y. And then you plug that value in and then evaluate the equation. So again, when you plug in 0 for x, you get 3 times 0, which is just 0. And then 0 plus 2y, well, that's just going to be 2y. So in any case, let's just go ahead and move on. Uh, to get y alone, because the 2 is next to it, it's multiplying. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 2. The 2's will cancel out, as you can see right there. And then negative 6 divided by 2 is going to be negative 3. And we now have a coordinate that we can plot right there at 0, comma, negative 3. That is our y-intercept, and there we go. So we have to get two points in order to graph a line. So we're just going to go back to the beginning of this equation and pick a different value to plug into our table. This time we're going to go ahead and plug in 0 for y. We could plug in another number for x, like 1, that would work too, but just to show you that 0 is a very easy number to use when you are graphing an equation, we're just going to go ahead and plug in 0 for y right there. So again, in the first equation, when you plug in 0 for y, that's going to say 2 times y, so 2 times 0, and 2 times 0 is 0. It just cancels out. So what you're left with is just the 3x and the negative 6, which are now written down right there. Now, just to go ahead and finish this up, we would need to divide both sides by 3, and then negative 6 divided by 3, that's going to give you negative 2, but that's the x value this time. So you need to write negative 2 in the x column. Now that we have our second point, though, negative 2 comma 0, we're going to go ahead and plot it, and now we are able to draw our line through those two points. And that's how you graph a line in standard form by using a table. So again, this equation was in standard form, ax plus by equals c form. And one way of graphing an equation like that is to create a table of values where you pick the x value or you pick the y value. And all you have to do is plug whatever value you choose into the equation and calculate the other letter. Now the reason why I'm explaining this so in-depthly is because the second equation, negative 2x minus y, we're going to solve that one, or we're going to graph that one a different way. So uh, what you will notice right here is that we have a negative y, and rather than plug in a value for y, we're just going to go ahead and add y to both sides to move it to the right. Now what we have is a new equation, negative 2x equals y plus 6, and what I'm now going to do is get y alone so that it is in slope-intercept form, like the other two equations from problem 1. When y is by itself, your line is in slope-intercept form. So, in this equation right here, if we can just get y alone by subtracting 6 from both sides, we're going to now have the new equation where y is going to equal, y is going to be by itself now because, again, the 6s were canceled out. So, uh, y is going to equal what we have right over here, negative 2x minus 6. And what we now have is an equation that's in slope-intercept form, and without the need of using a table like we did in the first question, we're going to be able to go ahead and graph this line just like we did in number one. And this is just another strategy for graphing lines. You could always use a table of values and you will get the same result. I'm just trying to explain a different way of approaching the same problem. So uh, really quickly, negative 6 is going to be your y-intercept. That's actually going to be off the coordinate plane, but you can estimate where the dot should be. And then your uh, slope this time is negative 2, but you need to remember slope is in rise over run form. So negative 2 over 1 is going to be your slope. Now, something to keep in mind, since the 2 is negative, that means you would be rising down 2, so your, uh, your graph would be going down 2 units even further off the coordinate plane. Here's another strategy for keeping your line on the coordinate plane, and just also something else to know about slope. Uh, you can always move the negative sign to the denominator. You don't have to leave the 2 as negative. It's essentially the same idea that was talked about up here. When your fraction is negative, you get to decide if the numerator or the denominator is negative. 
Well, the same idea works. If the denominator is already negative, then you could always flip the negative sign up to the numerator. Now, the reason why you would want to do this right here is because now that we have a positive 2, that is a rise of 2, which keeps you on the coordinate plane, and it makes your graph just look a little bit better. Your negative 1, that's your run, and you would be going to the left one unit, and there's your second dot. But again, uh, the, the main idea of me explaining it this way is just understanding the fact that your negative sign doesn't have to stay in the denominator or the numerator. You can move it around. And that idea of understanding that the slope can go in both directions, that can also help you graph in certain situations. In any case, we now have our second dot, so we're going to connect those lines, those, those dots, and there's our second line, and our solution is where the two lines meet, somewhere off the coordinate plane. Uh, again, though, this idea was just, or this, these questions were just meant to practice the act of graphing, not necessarily getting that exact solution, but graphing two lines and, and understanding that where they cross, those are the solutions. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to a substitution now. Again, uh, pausing the video and trying these on your own, that would be a very good idea, but let's just go ahead and begin the problem. Uh, you'll notice in problem one, both of the equations are already solved for y. When you already know what y equals, what y is represented by from the first equation, you can very easily make your substitution maneuver by just replacing the y in the second equation with the expression for y in the first equation, the negative 2x minus 3. So all that happened here was that the two equations were set equal to each other. Both of the equations equaled y. So that means 2x minus 3 has to equal negative 3x plus 7. So um, again, now that we have made our substitution step, we are able to now use an equation that only involves the letter x, which we can now find the value of. But again, the primary substitution happened because both of the equations were solved for y, so I just replaced the y in the second equation with the expression 2x minus 3 from the first equation. Moving on though, uh, to get x alone, we're just going to move the negative 3x to the other side by adding 3x to both sides. And then 2x plus 3x, that's going to give you 5x. Oh, but before that, uh, let's just go ahead and add 3 to both sides, and now we have 5x equals 10. We now want to get x alone by dividing both sides by 5, and then 10 divided by 5 is going to be 2. So once you make your substitution step in the beginning, you only have an equation that involves the letter x, and since it only involves one variable, you are able to isolate that variable, just like we did over here, and get your value, uh, which will be the x-coordinate in this case. Now in order to finish this problem, we also have to get the value of y. And we're going to do that by uh, taking our original equation of y equals 2x minus 3, and we are going to plug in our value for x of 2 into the equation right there. So uh, what I did was I wrote down parentheses because we are essentially replacing that x with a value, and it's going to be multiplying the 2. But if I didn't write parentheses around this 2, then it would say 22 minus 3, and that really wouldn't make sense. So uh, that's why when you make substitution maneuvers, you want to put parentheses around the number that you're plugging in. In any case, we replace the x in the first equation with 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 3 is going to be 1. So we now have our answer, x is 2, y is 1, and there is the solution to the system. And then something just to keep in mind before I move on to the next question, uh, this answer of 2 comma 1 means if you plug in 2 and 1 to the first equation, your result will be a true expression, something like 0 equals 0. That's true, 0 equals itself. Or maybe it'll be, um, it could be like 1 equals 1. That's a true statement. Uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is if you happen to plug your solution of 2 comma 1 into both the top equation and the bottom equation, both of them will be true because that's what the solution to a system of equations means. The solution is where the two lines, if you were to graph them, cross, or in this case, when you substitute one equation into the other, the solution is where the coordinate will make both of the equations true.
So you can test this on your own by plugging in 2 for x and 1 for y, and you will find that both, of the, uh, both, both sides of the equation will be equal to one another. Uh, but that's just a side idea. Just to keep in mind, that is what your solution means. If you plugged 2, 1 into both equations of the system, both of those equations would give you values or give you equations that are true. Moving on, though, in number two, uh, you will notice that in the top equation, y is all by itself, and we are going to take the uh, 2x minus 3, and we are going to replace the y in the second equation with 2x minus 3. Keep in mind, though, you want to substitute with parentheses, because if you don't, sometimes what you are trying to write out won't make sense. Just always use parentheses when you substitute. So we have 4x, and then in the second equation, after the 4x, there's a minus sign, which still needs to be written down. And this is one of those moments where using parentheses is really important. Uh, now that we opened our parentheses, we're going to write the 2x minus 3, and then finish that off with the uh, rest of the equation, the equals 9. Now the reason why the negative sign was so important to write down, at this point in the problem, we need to understand that the negative sign represents a negative 1 that's in front of the parentheses. And whenever you have a number in front of parentheses, you have to use the distributive property in order to remove the parentheses from the equation. You don't want to end your problem with parentheses. You want to get rid of them by using the distributive property. So you need to keep in mind that a negative sign in front of parentheses, that is representing a negative 1. So when we distribute that negative 1 to both of the terms inside of the parentheses, 2x times negative 1 will be negative 2x, and negative 3 times negative 1 will be positive 3. Now at this point in the problem, all we have left to do is just combine like terms and get x alone on one side of the equation. So we have a 4x minus 2x. Those are like terms. And we also have a plus 3, which we can move to the other side of the equation by subtracting it. So 2x, uh, 4x minus 2x is just 2x. And then because the 3's canceled out, we have now 9 minus 3, which is 6. 2 is multiplying the x, so we will divide both sides by 2. x will equal 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And uh, that's how you calculate your first coordinate. And what we now have to do, just like we did in problem 1, is take our value of 3 and plug it back into x in the first equation. Keep in mind, if we plug 3 into the second equation's x, we would still get the same answer for y. It doesn't matter which equation you plug your x value back into. You will still get the same answer for y. In any case, we have y equals 2 times x, so we're going to replace x with 3 inside of parentheses, because again, if you did not put parentheses right here, it would say 23 minus 3, and that does not make sense for what we're doing. 2 times 3 is going to be 6, and 6 minus 3, that's going to be 3. So again, uh, your final answer is just the coordinate, x equals 3, y equals 3, so you get 3 comma 3. Moving on to elimination. This is the last phase of, um, of the general ways of solving these equations where it's just the basic stuff. So um, let's just go ahead and get started. You uh, will notice if you add these two equations together, which is what you are doing with elimination, you are, you are adding the equation so that one of your variables cancels out to zero. When you add the two equations together, you're just combining the like terms. That's essentially all you're doing, combining the like terms. You will notice the 3x and the 4x will add to make 7x, but more importantly, negative y and positive y, those are opposites. There's a negative 1 in front of y, and then there's a positive 1 in front of the y in the second equation. And when you add these two terms together, negative 1 plus 1, that is going to be 0. So you have 0y. No y's will be in this equation now. The uh, 5 and the 2 will add up to make 7. But again, 0 times y, that cancels out because anything times 0 is 0. And adding 0 to an equation doesn't change that equation at all. So that is what the elimination procedure is essentially wanting you to do. Add the two equations together such that one of your variables will have opposite coefficients, and those opposite coefficients will always add up to zero. 
and that is how the, uh, the, the variable gets eliminated. So in any case, we now just have one more step to solve for x, and that would be dividing both sides by 7. When you do that, 7 divided by 7 is going to be 1, and that is your value for x. Just like in the substitution uh, problem page, you're just going to take your value for x and you're going to plug it back into either one of the equations. You will get the same answer if you plug x into the first or the second equation. It does not matter. 3 times 1 is going to be 3. And then you are going to uh, need to get y alone. Uh, again, keep in mind that negative sign in front of the y is going to stay there throughout the problem. When you take away 3 from both sides, you're going to be left with the negative y. Again, the negative sign is going to matter until the very end. Negative y equals 2. That negative sign, just like in the previous slide with the substitution problem, that negative sign represents a negative 1 in front of the y multiplying it. That negative 1 has to be removed from the y by doing the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division. So you're going to divide both sides by negative 1. When you do that, y is going to equal 2 divided by negative 1, and 2 divided by negative 1 is going to be negative 2. So there you go. Your next coordinate is 1 comma negative 2, and you now have your answer to the system. Keep in mind something that I said before, uh, your solution to the system, that means if you were to plug the x and y values back into both of those equations, both of the equations are going to be true, meaning they're going to say something like 5 equals 5 or 2 equals 2. Both of the equations are going to be true. That's what the solution of a system means. If a uh, coordinate were not a solution to the system, well, then that means one of the equations, when you plug in that coordinate, only one of them, maybe both, but only one matters, uh, would be false. So if, for example, you had a solution that said 3 equals 3, but 4 equals 5, because that second equation is false, the entire system would, not be, would be false for that particular coordinate. And uh, likewise, if uh, both of them were, were false statements, like 8 equals 3 and 4 equals 5, both of those are not true, that means the coordinate point would not be a solution to the system. In any case, just moving on to the second problem, once we erase all that stuff, okay, cool. Uh, again, you are just going to add the two equations together, and you will notice that the negative 4x and the positive 4x, those will eliminate because they are opposite coefficients. Negative 4 plus 4 is going to be 0, so you have 0x's. So the only thing that you bring down is the uh, 1y plus 3y, and that's going to equal 4y, and then uh, 6 plus 2, that's going to equal 8. Moving on to get y alone, divide both sides by 4 because the 4 is multiplying y, and then 8 divided by 4, that's going to be 2. So you now have your first value. This time it's y. Sometimes you get x first, but in this case we got our y value first, and you're going to plug that back into either equation. I'm just going to use the second equation because I notice that all the values are positive, and usually when you have only positive values, things tend to work out a little more smoothly. When you plug in 2 for y, you will have 4x plus 3 times 2 equals 2, and 3 times 2 is going to be 6. You will then subtract 6 from both sides, and then 4x is going to equal 2 minus 6 is negative 4. To get x alone, 4 is multiplying the x, so you will need to divide both sides by 4, and negative 4 divided by 4, that is negative 1. So you now have your coordinate, negative 1 for x and 2 for y. So at this point, uh, I'm going to pause this video and we're going to end this as a part one. And that's simply because the goal of this video was just to discuss the basic concepts of graphing, substitution, and elimination to get your uh, solutions to your systems. So uh, because of that, my recommendation is this. If everything you saw in this video was crystal clear to you, where you understood what was happening, the procedures, what the, uh, what the solution means in terms of the system, if all of that made perfect sense to you, then you are absolutely ready to move on to part two. But if any part of this video was unclear to you, was vague in some way, you absolutely need to go back to the beginning or just to that part of the video, rewatch it until the material is mastered.
So with that being said, uh, move on to part two if you are ready. Otherwise, review part one, and I will see you guys in class.